Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of the Big Blue News Podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Chris Beesmore, and we've got the co-host, Nolan Fleming, and I see you're wearing the robe again today. I'm tired. I stay tired. I'm really tired. It has been a longer day today than I expected. Yeah, I'm pretty tired as well. Um, Right now, I'm working the overnight shift at work, midnight to 8. It's not fun because... Yeah, you took a big L when you got assigned that shift. Yeah, it's because <laughs> we don't have, you know the right amount of producer so i have to <laughs> fill in for uh that ship right now and it stinks but obviously we're going to get into the podcast now and we are going to talk about multiple things but one big thing we're going to talk about is uk has finally landed the 7-2 crow we crow- did it chris we did it we yes did we it. did bonamir evisage so UK has finally landed him after the rumors were coming out on Friday that he would eventually commit to Kentucky. And he finally did it this morning at like 6 a.m. today. Yeah, great timing while I was asleep. So good job, Mr. Ivisich, on that. But uh, glad to have him here. But uh, I know you and I had heard uh, that on Friday that he was going to make an announcement that night. And I think everybody thought he was going to make an announcement yeah. that night. We were all, I feel like, like you said, everyone was on standby for an announcement that night. I was shocked when it did. I wasn't, well, I wasn't shocked, but I was a little surprised. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I thought, you know, after that, I think everyone thought, oh, Monday. When it didn't happen yesterday, I got a little suspicious. Yeah. As to, okay, what's going on? I know we had, I had put out on Twitter, on my Twitter, that I would be shocked if it wasn't this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, That if it wasn't this week, then something's clearly wrong. Uh, eligibility uh, had been something I had oddly heard was not going to be too much of an issue. They didn't think mm-hmm. and it, it turned really out wasn't. it really wasn't. So good job. That person that told me that good job source. Hey, can we hear can you clap for that source, please? There we clap go. Clap for the source. You all clap for the source. Good job. But um, the comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please hit me with more since you kind of knew what you were talking about there. But uh. Wyatt Huff and uh, Tristan Ferris obviously put out on tw- on their Twitters uh, eligibility had become a little bit of a concern, which is I'm not saying they're wrong. They were that was that is true. That yeah. happened. That very much happened, mm-hmm. and that is probably why he did not announce on Monday. I would assume, but they got that cleared up, and uh, he's here. And that yeah. is all that matters to me is that he's here now, and we don't have to worry about that. No yeah. more Ennis Cantor situations. Yeah, I'm excited about that, and hopefully no, like, Ennis Cantor situation. Knock on wood, even though this isn't wood, but, yeah. um, I'm really excited to have the big man. Like I said on a Friday night, everybody was on standby. Everybody was hoping he would announce his commitment on Friday. And what I honestly think happened was he just silently committed to Kentucky. Oh, but, yeah. But UK – uh obviously was working out to make sure he was eligible for this upcoming year and finally by tuesday i believe that he got the clearance to you know finally come to kentucky mm-hmm. it. and it's a big gift for kentucky because i feel like yugano yenso and aaron bradshaw they will be out for a little bit with their injury so he could potentially be the starting center this upcoming year obviously with you know bradshaw um, being injured along with Oyen. So, so potentially you could see the big man, the Croatian, as the starting center to start out this year. He will be, uh, to add on to that, he's going to be joining the team rather quickly as well. They're going to try to get him in as quickly as they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm excited to see that. I think the potential lineup right now with if Yugano Oyen so, and Aaron Bradshaw are injured, I would say probably at the one – you put Wagner probably two right now. Would put Reeves. Let Reeves be the two until, um, until Rob Dillingham feels comfortable. Three probably Edwards. Four Mitchell, and then the five finally Ivisich until obviously Brad. What's Hall. interesting to me with Ivisich, by the way, is that I saw you put on Twitter or X. I put I saw you. I, I don't even know what you say anymore. You did I saw you tweet? I saw you X something. Oh yeah. Lord. X. Good job, Elon Musk. <laughs> uh anyway i saw you put on x i'm just gonna say twitter i don't care i saw you put on twitter i saw you tweet uh and respond to somebody asking what you they thought what you thought actually that uh ibisich would be you know ranked if he were uh if he were a part of the class of 2023 and you said top 25 yeah. i absolutely think that that's correct i think this guy is legit i think he's going to be a really good addition mm-hmm. uh i think 
I think he's going to be better than everyone thinks he is. Everyone thinks he's going to be this raw talent, and he is. He, yeah, he is raw. He's, he's going to be a raw talent. But uh, oh boy, I th- I think there's more to to him than people realize. Yeah, and I've seen so many people come after Cal saying that he's going to turn him into like Greg Monroe or like yeah, Greg Roman. yeah. I'm like, I don't think he will. Nope. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what Visage can do this upcoming year. Like I said, I think he'll be the starting center until obviously Bradshaw and Oyenso comes right. back. Um, once they do come back, then I think UK will be fine. Obviously, probably Bradshaw will be the starting five then. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I'm excited to see what he can do. And I actually tweeted out this morning. <laughs> And I said as a joke, but it could potentially happen because Bradshaw, he does want to play the three and four. He doesn't want to play the center mm. position. But I made a joke saying you can put Aaron Bradshaw at the three. You can put then Ivisage at the four. And then at the five, you got no Yenso and run, <laughs> run three seven footers, man. Mm-hmm. The, he's going to do it. I just feel I, like he's going to do it. I no, I think. Just for like. Just a game against a weak opponent. Just if to... we're like against, oh yeah, like against like Florida International or someone like that. They're not playing FIU. I'm just saying in general. Are they playing FIU? I don't think so. Uh, I know they play like UNC Greensboro or something. This well, if they play anyone like that, <laughs> that will definitely happen when they're up by like 58 or whatever. Like, you know, he'll definitely do it. You've got to try out at least. You one. have to. You have to. <laughs> you are contractually obligated to do it. Yeah. Could you imagine though running three seven footer? <laughs> that would be so crazy. Yeah, you put Bradshaw at what? You you put Bradshaw at the three, Ivicic at the four, and then uh, Ugo at the five. At the five. Yeah. yeah, and then I would just run a tall man lineup from there. I would run like DJ Wagner at the one, and then put Edwards at the two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna do it, isn't he? And he's gonna do it when starters. he's thin. I mean. How I think what Wagner is like six two, but Edwards is like six seven or something. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? What if you that? put what if you put what if you put Edwards at the point and you put Thierro at the two? Oh yeah, that could work. That's that's a hypothetical. You could put or you could put Thierro at the ones and see if he actually played point guard last year. Yeah, but uh, that that would be yeah Thierro Edwards Bradshaw. If it's and then, yeah, that would be interesting. That would be something. <laughs> yeah, you gotta just try it. But uh, no, like I said, as far as that goes, uh, everything I heard, everything that we heard, pretty much happened. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's what um, happened. So, uh, good job, those people that told us that. Good job, mm-hmm. me and you, for doing such a good job and being good boys. Yeah, but uh. I mean, cool. Ivicic, like I said, he's going to be a lot better, I think, than people think. He, yeah. uh, and with that, the the roster is finally rounded out. This is your team, yeah. Uh, and the best thing Cal can do with this team and with Ivicic, specifically with Ivicic, the best thing he can do is do what everybody says he did and just roll the ball out on the court and tell him, "Here you go." Yeah. And I actually believe that too. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are comparing him to the unicorn, Kristaps Porzingis. So. I see it. I see it. Yeah, I see the potential definitely for sure. I saw Kyle oh, yeah. Tucker actually tweet something out earlier today. Uh, I think it was Kyle Tucker. It might have been somebody else. I'm tired. Like I said, working overnight. <laughs> but uh, it might not have been Kyle Tucker. But I did see some national like media person tweet out saying that he talked to an NBA executive. And basically, the NBA executive said that he isn't Kristaps Porzingis, but his game is very uh, similar to him, but he wouldn't compare him to Porzingis. Obviously, he's still a raw talent, the right. executive said. But, yeah, I'm excited to see what, you know, UK can do this year with the uh, with the team that they have. I mean, a couple months ago, everybody was freaking out about the team. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Like a month ago, two months ago, UK only had seven players on the team. And then you add, obviously, the two incoming freshmen to the team, Jordan Burks and uh, Josh. I'm blanking on his name right now. On who? Uh, the other guy that UK got, UCF commit. Joey Hart. Yeah, Joey Hart. There we go. Not Josh. Joey Hart. So yeah, it's hard. Nine. Then you get Reeves. And then, obviously, Trey Mitchell comes after everything that happened at WVU. And then, mm-hmm. of course, you get 
you visage, you know, on the team and UK has rounded out their roster, but yeah, everybody was panicking about a month to two months ago on the roster. And I'm glad UK coach Cal, he finally figured it out what UK needed to do to add, you know, players to the roster. And honestly, it looks like a top 10, top 15 team going into the um, season currently. Yeah, they're going to be a lot better than we thought they would uh, this time two months ago. Yeah. A lot better, too. Uh, I'm excited for it. I'm a lot more excited for it now that they got him. And uh, I think, uh, like I said, this team is going to need time a little bit, I'm sure. It's just what's going to happen. It's the Cal. It's the Cal era. That's just what happens. Yeah. And we need to all accept that, and we need to be patient with them. I Honestly, I don't know now that they're going to need as much time as we thought. Yeah, I don't think they will also. I mean, just going to Canada and they went 4-0 during the tournament, you know, winning gold and everything. And that team looks special right now. And plus, you brought back a lot of key players with Oyenso, obviously, once he returns. Reeves as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitchell, even though he wasn't at UK, he has a lot of experience. And then, of course, I do Fierro on the team. I mean, those right. four players. Uh that are on UK that have at least a little experience, you know, playing college ball. Right. And I will say too, they'll likely lose one of their first couple games because the, one of their first games is the number one team in the country, probably. And it's going to be Kansas. They're not going to win that. I don't think they might not. They might, if they do, then I'm, I'm fueling up that hype train as much as I can. And I'm getting on it and I'm running it full speed through Rupp arena because mm -hmm. I can't wait. If that's the case, and but you uh, probably might win, you know, some big games this upcoming year because I know UK this past year they struggled with UCLA, Kansas right. past year, and I'm oh, yeah, hoping, bad too. Yeah, I'm hoping UK can finally win some big games this upcoming year. And years if past they year. get out of their non con, and I don't think people realize just how hard that non conference is, it is you get Kansas, you get Gonzaga at home, yeah, uh, Michigan, I don't think is gonna happen but uh we'll see about that Miami, they played this year, I believe. get miami at home that's gonna be a marquee matchup in its own right ACC you get SEC. yeah uh you get don't they play ohio state i believe i'm not for sure uh, in cbs i think they play ohio state in cbs they should ohio state or north carolina won yeah uh either way and then um and there's there's still others out there i think that are gonna be global if global it was good, but <laughs> I don't think Lou will, will be good. But who knows? Maybe I'm um, overthinking. But uh, but if you yeah. got that non con though with one or two losses, you're gonna be looking actually pretty solid. Yeah, I agree for sure. I'm trying to see if I can pull up the non conference schedule right now. So, yeah, non conference schedule. Um, so far, what has been announced right now, they will be playing Kansas, which, which will be a good game, Champions Classic. St. Joe's won't be anything like too major. Miami, of course, Miami, Florida, UNC, Wilmington, no name. Um, they haven't announced the CBS Sports Classic yet, so obviously could potentially be Ohio State or UNC. And then Gonzaga and Louisville, they also play this upcoming year. Oh, no, no one went out on me while I was looking up the non-conference schedule, so I guess I'll have to hold it down while he is doing whatever all okay. right i'm back my computer died my computer died oh did he get a charger in real quick <laughs> yeah i got it <laughs> but uh i don't know if you heard what i just said but i just listed the non-conference schedule so far obviously not all the games have been announced but kansas champions classic st joe's won't be a big game at all no. miami florida acc sec challenge unc wilmington uh, they haven't announced the CBS Sports Classic currently right now, so obviously it could be Ohio State, UNC, and then also mm -hmm. Gonzaga and Louisville as well. I would assume it would be Ohio State because they uh, last time they played them was before COVID because they, they they were supposed to play them. Weren't they supposed to play them with Severe Wheeler and uh, Tata Washington and I think all so, them? And they got COVID. They COVID and they, they had to play Carolina. Yeah. So Because uh, that was the game they beat Carolina by like 30. Yeah, and then we, <clears throat> of course, went to the championship. Yeah, I went to the national title after we beat them with 30 that year. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I like I said, if they get out of there with one or two losses, they're going to be in good shape uh, for the rest of the year. Maybe not a one seed, but definitely a, they could be a two or three seed. Easy. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, they have tough opponents this upcoming year. SEC is going to be tough. Oh, it's going to be crazy because you're going to have uh, Tennessee, Arkansas. Had, Tennessee, yeah, Tennessee, Arkansas, Alabama, Auburn, Texas A&M, State. Mississippi State, yeah, Mississippi it's State, to, Missouri. They're all going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be just a uh, drag this upcoming year for SEC play, but yeah, hopefully it's going to be long. Hopefully, with the veterans so UK they have currently right now. They can help to, you know, lead UK to wins with, you know, Trey Mitchell, Antonio Reeves. Obviously, Abdul Thierro isn't really an upperclassman, but he played a little bit last year. I mean, he played He a knows lot what it's like. Arkansas. Right. Yeah. And but, uh, I think, I, like you said, SEC play will be a drag, but I think they can pull it out. Yeah, I think UK will be fine this upcoming year. UK finally brought, you know, a star – class freshman this upcoming year. I mean, seven freshmen on this year's team, obviously. Uh, five that will be key players, key starters, you know, on this year's team. So I'm right. just excited to see what UK can do this upcoming year in basketball. But let's stop talking about that, and let's talk about football. UK, we all expected that UK was going to land a running back today. Yeah, uh, that didn't work out whatsoever. He did not. Um, he's a four-star running back, Jason Patterson. He uh, actually committed to Sadly University of Cincinnati, and you know who's the head coach there? Scott Satterfield. Yep, taking our recruits from us to you know good old Cincinnati. Shake good old head. Cincinnati, Cincinnati with your industrial-looking city. <laughs> industrial-looking city. Is With really your true? skyline, your disgusting skyline, chili, and your yeah, your slightly successful Cincinnati Reds this year, and your des- <laughs> desperate, depressing Cincinnati Bengals. Hey, I'm a fan of Cincinnati minus you know the university, but yeah, go Bengals, go Reds, and hopefully, uh, hopefully the Reds will make it into the playoffs this year, and Bengals maybe eventually winning the Super Bowl even. <laughs> but uh but yeah, let's talk about him. You actually have your own podcast if y'all didn't know you want to talk about it real quick. Yeah. So Jason Patterson obviously is his name. Uh the four star according to uh on three, I believe. But um yes, you know. yeah. But uh he uh joined uh amateur sports scholars, the podcast I'm on. For, it was a brief one. It was about 15 minutes. If you really wanted to hear him just talk about how bad and awful Kentucky is or anything, you're really going to be disappointed. And if you want to hear him really explain in total detail why he went Cincinnati over Kentucky, uh, maybe a little disappointed too. But uh, he did tell me about – he did tell, tell us, tell the listeners, everyone, about um, why he chose Cincinnati. He just felt it was the best place for him. He said, uh, as far as uh, – decommitting from Cincinnati or flipping to Kentucky. Uh, this isn't on the podcast, uh, but uh, I would be stunned if that uh, were to happen. Uh, he's locked in. Yeah. Uh, he tells me the door is locked and nobody's going to, and people are going to be banging on it. He said, but uh, nobody's going to be opening it. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know why he committed uh, to Cincinnati over Kentucky? Because every media member had, him committing to UK up until probably the last night or to this morning because everybody was like he's a cat, you know. Yeah, I, I even Bearcat, thought that, but not a Kentucky Wildcat, sadly. But yeah, that's that's even what I thought. But uh, it was uh, he said it was a two, it was a it was a two horse race pretty much the whole way between Cincinnati and Kentucky is what he tells me, and uh, he also tells me that um, it was about about last week was when things he felt started leaning more towards uh Cincinnati late last week by the way not any not uh it was it was not it wasn't like like everyone acts like it was where it was like last night all of a sudden he just decided he was going to Cincinnati that definitely did not happen uh this is over the last like three or four days uh Cincinnati did make I think a bit of a push at him I think they did start uh feeling a little you know a little uneasy about where they were with him, thinking that Kentucky was going to be the be the pick. Uh, they started making a little bit of a push at him, I think, and uh, that was that. Yeah, yeah, and sadly, like I said, he did not commit to Kentucky. He obviously committed to Cincinnati, but also UK for football. They have two other chances, possibly three other chances to land another commit with Steven So Jr. as well. Yeah, 
Then you okay. got the quarterback in uh Stone Sanders, and then also the transfer from uh Northwestern, correct? Yeah, Nigel Glover. Yeah, Nigel Glover. So UK, they still have a chance to land three other recruits this weekend. Right now, I don't know anything about Nigel Glover uh, completely, but I think UK, they have a great chance to land the other two uh, players with Steven Souls and then uh, Stone. Yeah, I, th- I I don't know too much about Souls. Sanders, I think they're going to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I said that about Patterson, and I was not totally right. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, I started to change my prediction because, like I said, I'm working overnight, and then I see a tweet from just some random person I don't know who it was. You can, you know, obviously you can check X instead of Twitter, but uh, you can. Yeah, you can check X. Yeah, you can uh go to X, check out the tweet. But some person tweeted at me late last night saying that he's going to UC. I'm like, huh? And then I get a message from one of my uh, friends this morning, and he's like, yeah, he's going to UC. Obviously, he's not like my friend isn't the most knowledgeable about sports, but he's from the north northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area, mm. so. He uh, keeps in contact with, you know, players and everything. And he told me that as well. And then I get a, right. DM, from, I get a DM from another person saying, yeah, he's going to Cincinnati. I'm like, what the heck happened? <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of had the same experience. It was with you. And then it was with like one or two other people. Yeah. Like you messaged me saying he's going to UC first. And I was like, no, nah, I still be shocked. I, I quite literally probably have to cut off one of these later. Because I did tell you that I cut off a finger last yeah. week if he did go didn't go to Kentucky. And yeah. uh, that didn't work out for me very well. I'm going to have to say goodbye to old P- to the pinky right here, I'm sure. But uh, but it is what it is. Look, I'm very disappointed that they didn't get him. Yeah. Uh, I wish he was at, at Kentucky. I think it would have helped the class out quite a bit. But yeah. at the end of the day, you got Tavani Mazel, uh mm-hmm. or Mizzle, whatever, however you say the name. Tavani Mazel, isn't it? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I should honestly know, but either way, you got Tavani coming in, and you got uh, you still you got... have that running back. You still have that running back room, like Ray Davis. He's got another year of eligibility, I think, doesn't he? I think this is his last year, actually. Oh, wow. well, that's a little that's not fun, but uh, you still have a, a you have Silverville right and stuff like that. You, you're not you're not desperate. Yeah, uh, you're not desperate. You're not the most desperate in the world. Yeah, and then also Kentucky landed uh that. Running back from the class of 2023. I'm trying to think of his uh, name. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm looking it up right now, currently, as we speak to see who it is. Oh, why am I blanking? Uh, it's you, Marion Wilcox. Yeah. Wilcox. And you got, uh, you still have, you know, uh, Demi Sumo. Uh, yeah. From NC State. You, from NC State. So uh, you're Clint, good. I believe. Look You're still back. in good shape, but I think Patterson would have really put you in in great shape because uh, mm-hmm. he's a very good player, yeah. and I think he's gonna be really. I think he's even gonna be really good at Cincinnati, but yeah. um, it is what it is. Uh, he's still a great young man. I think he's a. Uh, I wish nothing but the best for the guy. He's very. He's been fr- very friendly to me, and very friendly to uh my co-hosts and stuff um <laughs> on amateur sports scholars uh throughout the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. I don't have anything bad to say about him at all. I always kept in contact with his recruitment and everything. He was great to keep in contact with, and he was actually going to be on the Big Blue News podcast. Yeah, that was that was going to happen. That was going to happen. He was going to join this podcast uh-huh. after he made his commitment, but then obviously uh, things changed. Yeah, and then uh, I told I told Nolan I said probably it's best not to get him onto this podcast because you know he didn't commit to Kentucky. Was yeah, I, I made the decision to put him on uh put him on the ass cast. So um yeah that 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 would have been fun had we gotten him on, but we didn't. Uh, mm-hmm. but you can listen to another interview, right? Right, Chris? We got yeah. another guy on. Yeah, we uh just actually talked to uh. A recent commit, he committed, I believe, just last month in June. Obviously, now it's two months. Hard to believe we're in August now. But, yeah, he committed, I believe, in June. Um, He's a uh, five-star kicker slash punter from the class of 2024, Jacob Cogway. Um, We just interviewed him today, and here it is. Welcome back into the Big Blue News Podcast, and today we are joined by the class of 2024 five-star kicker slash punter Jacob Cogway. Welcome into the episode, man. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. 
Oh, you're welcome. So we just wanted to talk to you, ask you a few questions, you know, why you committed to Kentucky. So let's get into uh first question at four is why did he commit to Kentucky? Um, really they just really were everything I wanted, you know. They first off, they were one of the uh few programs that was looking at me as what I believe myself to be. I talked to other major schools and great programs. Uh the Floridas, the Tennessees, the Oklahomas, you know, uh, the really big names, but I was there. Most, most places were look at me as a punter first guy. And that's not really what I do want to do. That's not what I like think my strength is. And that's not really what I love. You know, uh, I'm a kicker at heart and I wanted to be a kicker. And from, you know, Kentucky saw me as what I, what I really wanted to do. And, you know, they, they had a need that I uh, could come fill and those other places I was talking to their need just wasn't a kicker. So really it was the fact that Kentucky wanted me and saw my potential for what I, I want to do. And then what, and Kentucky itself, the great, um, you know, it's the biggest stage in college football, it's sec ball. And uh, it, um, it provides the, great opportunity for me to develop my skills as well which were the two things that were like the three things most important to me i wanted to kick i wanted to get as good as i could uh at my uh home that i found and i wanted to play you know on the biggest stage in front of the most people so and uh coach bowware has a tremendous track record with uh specialists in the past you know places he's been he's getting guys to the league and that just shows that he, he can develop me as a specialist once I get there. And that was super important to me from the first conversation uh, my uh, coach Bowler and my dad and I had, he led with, you know, this is what we're going to do to get you better when you get here. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things that were really most important to me and why, why I chose Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And speaking a little bit before the coaching relationships, why do you prefer being a kicker over a punter? Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just, more satisfying I mean it's for some people you know getting that punt to go out of bounds at the one is the equivalent of what my game winning field goal is you know <laughs> so it's just it's just what I love you know growing up playing soccer it's just I wasn't a goalie I wasn't drop kicking it I grew up you know with the ball on the ground at my feet trying to put it into place so it's just it's I, I just like it more and you know um yeah, and I just I, punting can come, but like you know, I'm not I'm a good punter, but and if that happens at Kentucky, it happens. But I I wanna I wanna kick. I love kicking, and that's 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 where I want to be for sure. Can I ask a question, Chris? <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. Do you have intentions to on being a very successful podcast host like a certain other punter in this world? <laughs> uh, uh, Pat McAfee. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, um. <laughs> I, I hasn't been on my radar. <laughs> uh, he's, he is a really charismatic personality who just draws people towards him. And that's a special thing that, you know, not many of us have. So, you know, I'm sure he wasn't thinking that's in his future either when he was 17. So not really anything point. out, but <laughs> yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Yeah. And actually my, uh, morning meteorologist where I work at, uh, He's from West Virginia, so he always talks about Pac McAfee, you know, alumni. So that's uh, always cool. But um, but yeah, so can you talk a little bit more about the relationship you have with Jay Bulwer? Yeah, he's really a super, super cool dude. He um really the fact like what's drawn me most to him is his expertise in the kicking field and how good of a special teams coordinator he is. And, you know, at a more personal level, I I mean, I haven't I'm not going to sit here and say, like, we're best friends because I don't I don't I've only met him in person on a few occasions. I'm all the way in Montana. I can't you know, I can't go to Kentucky uh, like once a month and just see the place. Right. I can't be at things. So, you know, when we uh, can contact, you know, it's super, super, super cool. He's extremely supportive in everything I want to do and all my goals when I get there. And yeah, I think we're just, 
we're just pumped to get working together and win some games, really. Yeah. Um, did you ever consider staying closer to home than, you know, coming to Kentucky? Because like you said, Montana and Kentucky, they are so far apart. Yeah. Um, that's, it's never really been a huge draw for me. I don't, I've moved around pl my fair share of times in my life. So I've, I've never, I'm used to being able to pick up and pick up and move and, you know, getting, getting away from the family is going to be, you know, it's going to be hard it's for sure. Like it's going to be different, but also like, you know, between me and you and don't tell my mom this, but kind of nice to go off. And kinda... <laughs> <laughs> I did. I get it. I'm going to college here in like two weeks and I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to be a little further away. Uh, it is a little nice to get out of the nest. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So there's, there's the pros and cons, but it, it really didn't matter because Kentucky fit everything that was really important to me. So. Yeah. And I'm excited that, you know, you're coming to Kentucky. Um, talking about a little bit of other players that were on the team previously, Austin McGinnis, do you have any players that, you know, you looked up to in, in the NFL wise kickers or punters that you tried to model your game afterwards? Um, as a, as a kicker, it's kind of hard because everyone's body is so different. Everyone's mechanics are so different. So if you catch yourself trying to model like a specific person, not everything they do is going to fit with you and not everything you do would work for them. So honestly, I, I'd say the most similar in the way I like to kick would be a Justin Tucker type where there's a, there's a big lean, you know, we have crazy long legs with kind of externally rotated hips. So we kind of, we kind of kick different than, a, than you, than a traditional, like how you would say, but it's, yeah, I'd say him, he's not a, he's not a bad person to <laughs> model your game after, you know, but it's, yeah, it's basing, basing some fundamental things on the great guys like him and then finding what works best for me off of those. So. Yeah, and I don't know if you uh watch Isaac Punts at all on YouTube, but he recently just came out with a YouTube video about how eventually kickers will be kicking 70-yard field goals. I don't know if that's a goal for you or what your basic goals for kicking is. Obviously, probably to make it, of course, but maybe a long that you want to eventually aim for. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's – the kicking game's evolving for sure. You know, um, guys are better and better and seventies are becoming more and more like able to happen in games, but I'm, I'm not out here chasing big numbers. I don't really care what my long is. If I'm a hundred percent 50 and in, you know, that's what matters. That's where 90%, that's where 90% of the kicks are. Right. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, I, I can, I can, I can get a ball from out there. It's, it's different with the line, you know, it's a lot, a lot of 70 yard balls you see hit are line drives and getting blocked by a six, six, five, 230 dude with a 40 inch vert. Right. So yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. I 70. I don't know about like <laughs> in a year, but maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's, maybe that could happen in a game in the far future. But Yeah. I hear you. Um, what is your career long right now in high school? Like actually in a game. In high school, I hit a fifty-four yarder my sophomore year, and then I had I had a few opportunities, but one of them, the snap went twenty feet over my head, and I ran back forty yards, <laughs> and what? And I had a couple blocked because there were just some breakdowns in the line. But yeah, I hit a, I hit a fifty-four my sophomore year. Have you ever pulled a Colin Goodfellow? Like he did at Missouri, <laughs> where you uh, lost the snap, went back. What was it? Chris? Can you better explain it? Yeah. So basically, he's talking about last year. They actually just made a rule, basically in the SEC. They did. They yeah, should call but, it the Goodfellow rule. Yeah, we call it basically the Goodfellow rule. But basically, what happened was the ball went over Colin Goodfellow's head and went like twenty yards behind him, and this was him punting. He uh, uh -huh. got control of the ball and then kicked it, and then some uh, Missouri player like ran into him. They got obviously rough. He the... stayed inside oh, the pocket. Yes, he was yes, still yes, in the pocket. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, he he got ran into, and then it was like it was late in the game, right? It was like 
Oh, it was very late. It was probably yeah, it was like the most crucial play, play of the game. Like yeah. probably inside five minutes of the fourth, I think. Something it was because yeah. Missouri would get the ball back probably in pretty good shape had he actually just got that thing away. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Um, You know, I've had punts go over my head. I've never actually ran – when they have, they've been like in the – in the our own – with it, like in our own 20, and they were safeties. Mm. But – I had I had one, I believe it was sophomore year, that I got snapped and my line just broke down and I went to kick it and the dude was already like in my lap so I, oh. I just I just dropped it and then the dude kept going like he didn't want to touch me but he was thinking he was blocking the ball but I didn't kick it mm. so I just dropped it and then no one was within twenty yards of me and I picked it up and ran for a <laughs> ran for a first down <laughs> but you know coach coaches were relieved when i got past that line i i don't know if it would have been great if i didn't but <laughs> all right gotta ask you this too yeah do you have a good arm on you and are you fast if you do have if can are we gonna do a fake punt with you here hey you I, we're I'm, I'm totally down for some fakes i i can but that's what i like yeah i can i can throw it 50 yards maybe 50. <laughs> he's got a cannon on him we might, <laughs> we might be playing you at quarterback dude right i'll hop in there yeah um Speaking of, do you have any goals for your senior year of high school, whether with the team winning state or anything? Uh yeah, that's always that's always number one. We're we've gotten we've came in second twice in the time I've been here, you know. We we last time we won was in twenty eighteen, but we're always like in that championship or close to it. So that's gonna be goal one. That's always goal one. Just win as many games as I can for the team. Do whatever I can that to for us to have the most successful season. But yeah, if the, if if that is, you know, kicking twenty field goals in the season and being our leading scorer, then it can be that. If if we're killing it and I kick two all year, you know, that that's all right too. So it's it's whatever I can do to help it help us help us get the dub. And what are you most looking forward to, you know, next year whenever you do actually step on UK's campus as a freshman? Obviously, I know you're still uh, going to be a senior this upcoming year in high school. Um, Most looking forward to freshman year. Honestly, the operations team, my snapper and holder at a D1 level is going to be a luxury. <laughs> that <laughs> might be what I'm most excited for, honestly. But, and then... Yeah, just getting in some games and playing in that atmosphere and having that pressure on me. Yeah, that I'd say that, but also the snapper and holder is going to be nice. And and fake punts. I can speak for him. It's oh, going to yeah. be the fake punts. <laughs> <laughs> Max Duffy. <laughs> Max Duffy. You know, how does it feel to be a non-Australian punter at Kentucky? Because that is something that we have oddly enough gotten gotten used to. Uh yeah, I sh yeah, that rugby background, the guys coming in. I had a chance to talk. I forgot his name. The your uh our uh hunter uh, at the moment. Oh, Wilson Berry. Yeah, Wilson Berry. That's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. He was he was he was a super cool dude, but they're all old. They're like 27 year old dudes <laughs> with a wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's the yeah. thing. That's that's the thing for some reason. No, yeah. oh, it's gonna be weird. You know, if if punting comes, I might mm -hmm. just be a regular old kicker mm -hmm. who's American. <laughs> Odd yeah. that there's not as many Australian kickers. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that and... would be really that would be something if we got an Australian kicker again. That would be. You think is there another Australian punter? I thought Chris, isn't there another one that they were going after, uh, um, or I'm had not... gotten for this upcoming year? I'm not for sure. I know they landed somebody from Kentucky, I believe, for. Kicking or punting that's probably year. what I'm thinking of. It's probably not an Australian. You're probably right. Yeah, I forgot. I think last year we got like a kicker or a punter from class of 2023, but I'm blanking on his name. He's from Kentucky, I believe, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah. So I think that's all the questions I have. Do you have anything else you would like to add, Nolan, or you know, Jacob? I mean, is uh, first of all, thanks for coming on, and second of yeah, all. Sure. Those fake punts are going to be fun. I can't wait. I can't wait to just watch you just toss that thing like 80 yards down the field oh, to a wide-open Dane Key. It's going to be so fun. For sure. Yeah.
But yeah, thank you again, Jacob, for joining. And I wish you the best of luck for your senior year of high school and can't wait to get you onto campus, you know, for 2024. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait either. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on. All right. So that was the interview with the kicker slash punter, Jacob Cogway. And I thought he was a great interview. Sadly, we could not see him. His video camera was not working <laughs> for us. So he was trying to get it to work, but I was like, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. But yeah, I thought he was really great. Uh, com- tried to compare himself, I guess, to Justin Tucker, you could say. <laughs> oh, yeah. He really thinks highly of Justin Tucker. I would like for him to be a little more like Pat McAfee. That would be fun. I want, I want the Pat McAfee. I want... As a punter. Whenever Jacob Callaway is either the most successful kicker or punter in the NFL or the most successful podcast host in the world, I want everyone to remember that he was discovered by us. Yeah, he was discovered by us, not UK for sure. <laughs> no, not UK. We discovered him. Yeah, we, we, uh, we were the ones who tapped his untapped potential for podcasting. Yeah, obviously, he uh, made a little joke whenever uh, Nolan talked about that. He was like, yeah, probably Pat McAfee wasn't talking about podcasting at the age of 17. <laughs> Maybe he was. You don't know. Yeah, you never know. And obviously, he's making more money. I highly doubt it, though. Than, uh, than being a punter in the NFL, of course. A lot more. A lot more money. Yeah, I mean. But, um, no, was... great guy. Great uh, interview. I think he'll he'll be very successful here. Uh, we're in, we're going to be in need of a kicker uh, here shortly. So, uh, who even is the kicker this year? I think it's Wilson Berry, maybe. The kicker? Or is it Chance Poor? Or is it chance for I have no clue. I would need I know, to I know he's back. I just don't know who it is. Yeah, I'm blanking right now because of course uh we lost uh what's his name? He graduated. Uh blanking on his name. Matt Ruffalo. We lost Matt him. Ruffalo. Yeah. Matt Ruffalo, he left because of course he graduated and then called everyone him. keeps calling him Mark Ruffalo. It's so funny. Everyone on every if it feels like everyone on every uh on every single uh game we had would call him Mark Ruffalo one time. Yeah, but yeah, I'm going to look it up because both, you know, Matt Ruffalo and also uh, Colin Goodfellow are both gone right now. Um, yeah. So right now I was looking, so they added, I saw Kentucky also added a kicker for this class. Uh, his name is Jackson Moore. Um, right. Obviously that could be, uh, he could be the primary kicker, you know, this upcoming year. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see who's going to be the kicker and punter this year because uh, we do – I right now I'm looking on UK's website. Um, yeah, it's the 2023 football roster. It says Chance Poor is on here along with Alex Rayner, um, Max DeGraff. He's listed as a wide receiver and a kicker. Jackson Moore, Michael Bernard, and Jackson Smith. So, UK, they have quite a few kickers on this year's team. So, it'll be interesting to see who gets the starting nod. Um, the punters for this year's team is is Heath J. J. Who? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. J. <laughs> U. That's, a, that's an interesting name. And then, of course, uh, Wilson Berriet. So, UK, right now, they only have two punters compared to the list of their kickers right now with uh, – Six, I think I named off. Yeah, six kickers UK. Uh, they have currently this upcoming year, and probably chance poor gets the nod. I would say. I would say it would be chance poor, although I wonder how salty they are about the Florida game. Uh, here a few years ago. Oh my! It feels like chance poor. God, has- he's been here for ten years, hasn't he? He's a. Uh, it says on the roster for UK, he's a red shirt fifth year. For what it's worth, his first year here, he's here in twenty eighteen. He was, yeah. He uh, because remember Miles Butler kind of stank it up a little bit, and they had to uh replace him, and it was with Chance Poor. Yeah. So for what it's worth, I was in middle school when he started, and I am now a freshman in college. Yeah, and so I've, uh, time flies. I've been out of college for almost now, going on uh three years basically. I graduated in twenty one, so yeah, I'm going on. You were in high school when he was here, and you've been out of college for three years. Yeah, going on three years. That's crazy. Yeah. Or well, whatever. You were well, you may not have been in high school, but either way, he's yeah. been here for a long time. I can remember uh sitting on my grandfather's lap as a ten year old, I guess, or six year old and watching Chance Poor <laughs> kick for the Kentucky Wildcats. Yeah. I just remember that Kentucky Florida game from a few years ago. I will never get that out of my 
Oh man, it hurts. It hurts. They would have won. Yeah, if he made that kick more than he like, makes it kick the yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. The defense was so good in that game for the most part. Yeah. Uh it's just other little... than Cash Daniel trying to snap Kyle Trask's ankle, that really wasn't a good look. No, it's not. Yeah. And maybe Cash Daniel will be on the podcast hopefully this year. I don't know. Maybe. Been reaching out, so we'll keep y'all up to date. But uh also a latest update on Stephen Sells Jr. Um, he will be announcing his commitment tomorrow. Um, he told Justin Rowland that just now, basically on Twitter. So to give y'all an update on him. So tomorrow we'll have Stephen Sells Jr. and Friday we we will have Stone Sanders as well, and then potentially a third one with Nigel Glover. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that would be uh that would be uh something if we can get if we can at least get two of those. Yeah, two out of three. And I feel confident right now and uh I am confident in Steven Souls and then I'm also confident in yeah. Sanders. Um from I feel very confident about Stone Sanders. I uh I don't have really a grasp on Nigel Glover though. I I can't tell you anything. Yeah. I heard it was down to I think three schools with UK, Michigan and Ohio State. They get him, it'd be pretty big. Yeah, it would be he'd be on this year's team too, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would be on this year's team. He wouldn't be have a good addition or anything. So, right. yeah, it would be interesting to see if UK can land those three players. And then I also read recently that UK they are also going out for another quarterback in the class of twenty twenty five, Ryan Montgomery. So it'll be another good addition too if they can get him. It'll be interesting to see if Kentucky can land two quarterbacks in the class of 2025 because obviously this is the last year for Devin Leary. Then you'll have mm-hmm. a freshman and quarterback coming in with Cutter Bowley, but you could potentially see Destin Wade or Kaya Sharon potentially be the starting quarterback. I uh, personally doubt Kaya Sharon starts. Yeah, I don't think he will either. Obviously, it's still a wild way. Twenty the twenty twenty four season is a wild way, and you could potentially see one or both of the players transfer. Obviously, we mm-hmm. also have that Iowa transfer from last year. He came to do Hogan. Do Hogan. He could potentially transfer. It'll be interesting to see just how UK fills out their quarterback, you know, quarterback room in the years to come. Because Liam Cohen, he has to find his guy, and who knows, it might be Cutter. It might be Stone Sanders if he does commit to Kentucky or Ryan Montgomery if those, you know, two quarterbacks commit to Kentucky in the future. You never know, but um, I don't know. You you got – that's all I have really as far as recruitment goes for football. Yes. Yeah, same here. I'm just excited to see how this week goes. Hopefully today, like I said, we got some good news with Kentucky basketball, got some bad news with Kentucky football. But, hey, at least we got to interview a uh, kicker slash punter and – Hopefully, he'll have a great year this upcoming year, Jacob Conway. But do you have anything else you would like to add, Nolan? Stay sober. Go Big Blue. Uh, that's about it. Mr. Listen to this. Listen to Amateur Sports Scholars. Uh, follow me at OnUKY27. Follow the blog, the Amateur Sports Scholars, the Scholar blog. Yeah. And yeah. listen to our podcasts. Mm-hmm. And listen to these podcasts because they're really good too. Yeah. And don't forget about Mr. Exhibition Antonio Reeves. Yeah, I'd never count him out. Mr. Exhibition Antonio Reeves. Yeah. All right. I think I think that's the end to the podcast. I'm really tired. I might be taking a nap after this. I think time. I am too. I'm really, really sleepy. Well, no, I can't take a nap. I got a birthday party at six o'clock. Oh, oh man. Birthday party. Um, but I'm really tired. I have to be back at work at midnight. So I only you have, have fun with that, dude. You have fun with taking graveyard. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I honestly do hate it. But all right, let's end the podcast for today. Thank you all for watching. And hopefully you all will watch this podcast and future podcast episodes in the future. Peace.